Hello there. Welcome to the Business Day Philanthropist series. On this show, we get to speak to individuals and organizations that are touching lives one day at a time. My name is Elizabeth Musa, and today I'm seated with Mrs. Titi Adebayo, who runs the Paroche Foundation, which she formed in loving memory of our son, Taiwo Adebayo. And she's here today to discuss about the foundation and all of the good work that she's doing. Welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you very much, ma'am. So very quickly, let's go back a little. Tell us how you started this foundation. How did we get into charity? Yeah. Like um, you said earlier, the foundation was established in memory of Taiwo. Emmanuel Adebayo, my son, who passed on 20th of August, 2012. And um, it was a devastating one. He was hit by a drunk driver. He came home on vacation and he went out just on a bright Sunday afternoon. And the vehicle, the driver, drunk, hit him and went off. Mm. He was um, taken to the hospital, hoping that he would come around and um, that was it. Mm. It was a devastating one. Excruciating pain for me. Mm. It was um, my favorite son. Mm. And it was something that I don't pray that any woman should go through. I went through it and in recovery, I can't even use the word recovery because it's still there. Mm. Only that the foundation is giving me comfort. Mm. Was a loving child, caring, reaching out to people, mm. helping, will go out of his way, meet people or meet beggars on the road stop by, give a hand, his whole clothes, give it out, mm. and so many good things about him. So much that when he passed, I, I, I felt <laughs> if a young 26-year-old graduate who had a future mm. in front of him was just snatched off like that, what is the purpose of us who are much older and we cannot impact life. In the process of the pain, I, I was asking God, what will I do with these ashes? Mm. How can I go on with these ashes? Mm. For about 40 days, I was still in that wilderness. And a flash came to me and I saw that I needed to help those who are under substance abuse and addiction to save somebody, to remove tears from mother's eye, mm. to give solace and to give life to a promising soul. Mm. So I decided to retire <laughs> from some profession that was very lucrative. Mm. And I said, I better face this. Maybe mm. that's my journey. Mm. And Paroche is Taiwo's nickname. Uh, they call it Paroche, Paroche, Paroche. And I, I, then I was like, what is this Paroche thing? Mm. And then it occurred to me after that 40 days, and that name came back. And I was like, Paroche. It was then I discovered that Paroche is actually from parochia, assemblies of priests. Mm. And they say, that is the meaning. Let me go out there and save somebody's life. Wow. And that is the genesis of Paroche Ritual Foundation. Mm. Quite an interesting story and really sad, but it's just beautiful what you have brought out of this and how you're saving lives through this foundation. Very well done, Ma. Thank you. So, I mean, when we're talking about this foundation, I know you've been running for some years. 24. We started exactly a year memorial. That was 20, 20th of August, 2013. 
That mm. was when Barrow Charitable Foundation was brought forth. Mm. Would you like to share with us some of the um, success stories? I know there have been plenty lives mm -hmm. that you've saved. Um, some of maybe one that really stuck out for you, one life that you probably, your foundation has um, Let helped. me quickly give you a, a, a bit and pieces of song that is so interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed then that Taiwo used to go and meet with people. Mm. And one of them was um, has been on drug for 35 years. Wow. I will, I will not give his full name, but Ray was on drug for close to 35 years. 35 yeah, years. 35 years wow. on drug. And he has gone to 11 rehab when I spotted him. I knew somehow along the line, I'll see that he wore that was one of his clothes. And I looked, I said, when that was, al was alive, that seems to be like your cloth, your shirt. The mommy I gave him. Mm. Ah, this boy, this young man, and he said, he doesn't even have any family anymore. Mm. So let's reach out. So when I will pass, I reach out to him mm. on the Falomos bridge. Wow. And, and I, I, Sorry, I, I told him what's the problem. He was actually a guinea pig then on drugs and mm. he was, you know, he was, um, and many a times my son would say, let's help this boy. Let's see what we can do. And I don't even want to move. And if I, I always chase him, I don't even move him. Not to know that he was a piece of raw gold mm. that was never polished up, you know, went through fire. To cut the long story short, when I started the rehabilitation, it was actually post rehabilitation I started. And I said, come in, come and come for treatment, for recovery process, mm -hmm. detox. He said he doesn't need it. He's gone to 11, there's nothing new. But as God will have it, one day, he had asthma, and they put him in a wheelbarrow, wanting to throw me him into the lagoon. My car drove past, and I saw him, and I ran, and I realized it was asthmatic because of the way he was panting. So mm. I bought Ventolin inhaler, and just some puff, he he came back. Wow. And he said thank you and went away. But there was a situation that happened that made him to come to me. Mm. And he came to my office, 310, about my colleague. Mm. And he said... That's in Yaba. Yaba. And he said, I need help. As mm. at that time, he was thinking, smelling as if it was a dead body coming over. And then we were able to help him, get him to the rehab. He had three cardiac arrests. God saved him. Wow. We kept taking care of him for for a year. He was then almost 50. Mm. And he recovered. Mm. No wife, no children, no family. Not knowing that he was that very special human being. And I do I can't claim that it was me. I can't claim it was Paroche Foundation. Mm -hmm. But I, I know that Paroche Foundation, through the help of God, was able to get him back mm. to fullness. And today he's married. Oh, wow. He has three kids. He's an ambassador of Paroche Foundation. Oh, wow. So much that he kept telling people, you know, the evil effect, the detrimental effect of substance abuse is one of my big time story. Mm. And I'm, I thank God for that. And that's just one. If I go, I, the second one is, was a girl who was, who abused prescription drug. I call her gold. Mm. I call her gold. She left home. 
and she she messed up and she left home. And they have been looking for her. When I saw her, my impression of what she told me was that no mother, no father, nobody, she's just there. No, no, so are you a ghost? She said, no, that they are all dead. After a month, I took her in. I placed her in the home and I tried to nurture her, counsel her, treated her. They have been looking for her for about a month. In fact, they thought I'm the mother. Hmm. But today, she's back. She's a graduate. She's recovering fast. And I can say that is also my story. Hmm. The last one is not actually to the home, but along the line, if you pass Lagos Expressway some years back, you see a guy lying in the media very close to a local government, I don't want to mention them, and he was there dying gradually, daily, and he was there for almost a week. Hmm. And I felt, no, I can't be passing here and see this guy. Everybody says he's a mad person. And my thought is, even if he's mad, he's not supposed to die on the road. Let's see what we can do. I move him to the Aba Psychiatry Hospital. There, he was, you know, treated, so many trauma. But not knowing that this guy is a twin. Hmm. He was the son of an ambassador in one of the neighboring country who left home and came to Nigeria. Oh my goodness. I never knew he was the namesake of my son, Paroji, until he recovered and it was more audible. And by the grace of God, we went to the embassy. We spoke with them. They were able to arrange for him to be moved to the country. Mm -hmm. He's alive today, celebrating life. We can always reach out and touch life positively, which is the theme of Parochi. Yes, Parochi Reach Out Foundation. Yes. These are so, so like, so beautiful stories. And it's just amazing that you happen to be the vessel that's doing this with your foundation. I mean, there, you've talked about how that man, after 50 years, now his life He's has married. changed. He's he married with kids. kids. It's beautiful. Beautiful wife, too. That's such a beautiful story. I mean, are there some misconceptions around drug abuse that your foundation tries your best to address? When anyone in the family has issue of drug, it may be initially like a you know, social drinker or you know, just playing around mm -hmm. and then get addicted. Such people are most of the time stigmatized. Mm -hmm. And instead of us to reach out and help them, rather we, we, we push them aside. We blacklist them. We don't run to save them. Mm -hmm. I want the society to begin to think inward. Many of the people that have this addiction, it might be even as a result of overuse of prescription drugs. It might be because Gold was because she has sickle cell. Is it anemia? Anemia, yeah. anemia, yes. anemia. yes. And that the pain was the cause of her taking the drugs mm. so much that she got addicted. We need to help one another. Mm. Everybody is going through challenges in our society today. Absolutely. It is only when you speak out. But if we notice that somebody needs help, we should reach out. We should help. Mm -hmm. Who knows what that individual will become tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And that is my that is what I'm advocating for. That we should not stigmatize them. We should not cast them away. We should love them. We should show them. We should embrace them. We should give them hope and life. Mm -hmm. And in such a way, we turn the world around. And we save ourselves. Absolutely. Yes. I, I like how you added that. We will save ourselves because the truth is, just as you mentioned, the cycle to addiction is not—it's not like it, it's not linear. It's yeah. not like it's just something. It's 
spiraling wow. effect. Yes. So I can imagine how um, just being able to address this and just changing these lives, it's, it's, uh, the impact is far reaching. I mean, you are doing this with your foundation. I know that you have to raise funds for the foundation. How are you able to raise funds for your foundation and how then do you ensure that there's accountability? Yeah. Initially, I left a multinational and I went all out with my gratuity to start. Mm -hmm. And believe me, I believe if you see what is going on, you will believe in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I don't need to. I have never gotten any so-called grant from, you know, until people began to see. Organization began to believe in it. Mm -hmm and begin to say, look, we want to be part of this. And that is why I have some organization who faithfully, consistently fund Parochia Retail Foundation. Mm. And it is making impact. However, it is never enough because the whole world is upside down. Mm -hmm. The issue of drug abuse and addiction is something else now. In fact, it is no more done in secret. You can walk along the street and then you see them. And you, you keep wondering, how long will this be? Mm -hmm. Are we safe? The issue of safety. So accountability requires that every of our expenses, we have audit report, we have proper records keeping and prepare our financial statement and we submit for verification to the government as well as to our board of trustees. Mm. That is one thing. And that is the way we do account for our proper spending and, you know, the budget line is well streamlined. So let's talk about education. How does your organization reach out to educational institutions, universities, um, secondary schools, to encourage advocacy against drug abuse? Yeah. The issue of going to secondary schools, tertiary institution, is something we do every week. Fantastic. Every week we have to go out. We have six districts in Lagos State, mm -hmm. and all the districts we have touched through our awareness campaign against substance use and addiction. We go to schools, we encourage students to, 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 to stay away from drugs if they have never, you know, dive into it. And those who have started dealing with it, they should stop. And we encourage students. We created a platform called Parochi Pathfinders. Mm. Parochi Pathfinders is for students who wants to be like an ambassador to be able to tell the, their peers the detrimental effects. And if they go home, they should also do the same thing with the family. It's a group of students who have volunteered to have our lapel and say, look, we want to become good ambassador. We want to be good leaders in the future, void of substance use. We also go into deeper waters by dealing, you know, having seminars for the counselors, student counselors, who see them every day. We don't see them every day. The students and the counselors, they meet, okay. they interact. Mm -hmm. And we organize seminars for the um, student counselors on how to deal with students with issues mm. and how to be able to receive them and not to castigate them to say they are useless students and then throw them into the woods. So we encourage them to embrace and, you know, show them the right way. That is secondary school. For universities, mm -hmm. we have... Parochi clubs. Fantastic. And we collaborate with Drug Free, uh, free Club of the University. Okay. Which is, is know, it just the 
are we talking about public universities or public Both and public private? public and private. Okay. For instance, you, you need like the free, the drug free club and parity. We go out to do public awareness. Mm. We have volunteers. And then those who are graduates or alumni from this university, they are called paroche volunteers. We term them paro frenzy. Oh, interesting <laughs> name. I like, I like it. I like that. So, you, you know, when you say paro frenzy, yes, we can connect. Ah, mm. This is a, a friend of paroche. Whenever we have a program, they come in, they are volunteers, they freely give their services. And that is how we're able to go, you know, touch the roots mm. of all this because we cannot just go there once in a while, do campaign. Before you know it, you forget. So if we are able to deal with this and um, talk with the student counselors, they will continue the move. Meanwhile, they are also part of frenzy because they have their our lapel. Mm. And then if it's the university or tertiary institution, they have they are paroche club members and look at it it's going round mm. and that is why we feel in the next few years everywhere in nigeria we should have somebody to connect with a network that is formidable mm. not only that we also organize anti depression seminar for organizations institutions you know, insurance, banks, and the mm -hmm. rest of it. It's not so much of that, but the one for schools, we want to catch them young and move their hearts away from substance use and addiction. Mm. Beautiful work. So how do you reach out to the minority communities? I'm talking about the people in the villages. Uh, how has Paroche Reach Out Foundation, how have you been able to reach them? In the villages, my... This is part of the future plan of Paroche that, mm -hmm. by the grace of God, Paroche's desire is to reach all the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria, mm -hmm. have our rehab center there, go to the local government, and this networking thing will help us, even though it is, there are some constraints mm -hmm. which we know of that course. to run, you have to have the instruments, the resources to be able to do it. And I believe when there is a will, there will be a way. I mean, you've talked about this constraint, but I mean, I could assume that I know, but someone watching might not really know. Oh, so oh. do you want to discuss some of these constraints? Mm, definitely. My people say the instrument to move a vehicle mm -hmm. is finance. Mm. You know, if you desire something and you are constrained with some things, both finance, um, policy, site of policy, mm -hmm. man capital, human capital rather, these are part of the things that will limit your reaching your targets. But I believe that when you have the idea, when you have the will to do it, God will put it in your hand and your thoughts. Absolutely. And then it will be possible. Absolutely. And, and this brings us to collaboration. Yes, a day at, at a time. time. And this brings us to collaboration. I'm thinking now you have a foundation and not just you, every other pe person that has foundation. How do you collaborate with government agencies and other organizations to push for advocacy against drug abuse? That is very key. The very day we started, we have to get the foundation registered with the government, mm -hmm. look at the agencies that are directly involved, like the NDLA, like NAVDAC. We are well known. If you open their website, you will see Paruchi Foundation there. Okay. Yeah. And then we have other organizations that we have the same vision, the same objective to combat this. We are connected. Mm. We are registered with them. The Ministry of Education, Social Development and Youth, mm. we are registered. Mm. They know us. They support us. 
they encourage us. This is very key. Without them, we will not be able to fly. And we have other private organizations too that are very, very supportive. We have Pacific Holdings, we have Spring, Springtime Development Foundation, we have David Adeliki Foundation, we have Juscelo, we have um, KB Club of uh, College of Medicine. We collaborated, there was a time we collaborated um, together. And the free, um, drug free club, these are reputable organizations and the government agency mm -hmm. that have been supportive backing us up. Mm. And then uh, this is uh, a good thing. Absolutely. So you get a lot of support from the government. I think that's very impressive because mm. with the work that you do, you do need lots of support, lots and lots of support. So even are there... though, sorry, mm -hmm. even though there are some hiccups, mm. terrible hiccups. I know. That is um, like, Oh, oh, if you don't want me, let me shake my sandal and go. There are some that would not want you. They don't even want you around. If you talk about drug abuse, so, 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 and then you put you off. Hmm. Then we have them. So, but notwithstanding, that should not discourage us because we know what we are looking for. I know why I, what brought me into it, hmm. and I'm not going to be discouraged. Hmm. So that is... Um, that is that. I, I, cooperation is different from financing. Mm -hmm. I don't mix it together. I have full cooperation. Mm. Yeah. Full cooperation. Cooperation is different from financing. Love that. Now let's talk about regulation. Um, someone is looking and thinking, oh, okay, yes, we have all of these foundations here and there, charities here and there. Do you think that we have enough regulation for this? Because it's an industry, it's an industry in itself. Do you think that we have enough regulation? Are there policies that you think that the government needs to introduce to make this industry itself much more productive, much more fruitful? Yes, much more effective. Effective. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that the government has a role, a major role to play. The government must be such that we not say, what do you have for us? It must be, let us embrace you mm. and run with the vision. Mm. Let it be a culture of a civil servant and the government agency to say, ah, you are doing our work for us. Oh, God bless you. Let's run with that vision together. And then we keep passing the baton and move forward. If we have been doing that, and if we continue to do that, the issue of having our street littered with sachet of substance abuse and all sorts of things will not be an issue. Are you with me? Yes, so I am So it you. is a thing that policy that will mop out all the excesses that will not allow... Um, lose use of substance abuse, drugs, and alcohol spirit for an underage, a minor, should not be in the social media, piping TSB, piping weed, and, and making it look as if it's the in thing. It should not be. Mm. Let us look at it. If such child grow up, definitely we'll have a lot of mental issue. And that is why there is so much insanity in the, in, the, in the society. Let's save life. Let's make them to know because most of them don't even know. It is what you have that you give. If you don't have it, if a parent is an addicted person, you don't have anything to hover your child. Mm. So it is important for us to know that these things is not adding value to life. Rather, it's making it to to destroy lives. So it should be something that the government should back, back it up and enforce the policy of not allowing minor to just cut, you know, what, the, what do you call it? The, is it sachet? And then pump it up, 
they are going to school and they have it in their bags mm. and they distribute. You see, it's done everywhere now and there is nothing to stop it. But when that child has mental problem, they begin to strangle his or her mother or father, they will know that it is because we have not been taking adequate care. Mm. Like I say, charity begins at home. Train up your child and it will not depart from you. If you don't have anything to offer a child, it will go a wire. And the, the ripple effect will bounce on the parent. Definitely. What you sow, you will reap. May we not sow an evil society that will end up, you know, turning against us in the future. Mm. Thank you. Amen. So as we close, um, I'm going to ask you this question. I think it's very important. How do we encourage the public to embrace sustainable philanthropy? Because this is very important. And I'm not sure that many people see this as something that they should do. And number two, what is the future for Paroche Reach Out Foundation? Yeah. Before I um, answer that question about sustainable philanthropy, philanthropy. Mm -hmm. There should be a guideline. Even if you are buoyant and you want to give, it's good to give. But then there should be a structure in place. There should be a guideline as to disbursement. Mm. You don't give a person who is not adding value, who just had a, a name and not doing, you can't see anything, impact. And then you pump grants into such hand. Those who are working, you is it because of connection? Mm. It should not be. There should be a standard measuring score. You score it. And then it will enhance people to be accountable, productive, impactful. However, that one aside, for the foundation to move forward, we have things we have written down as our future objective, like I said before. Yes. We commissioned the rehabilitation center mm. on the 15th of um, February this year. Mm. It, we used to have a post rehabilitation. But when you look at all the rehabilitation homes and centers in Nigeria, it's fully booked. In mm. fact, some are waiting two months, you know, on the line. But we want to make sure that every state, every geopolitical zone in Nigeria have the impact of Paruchi Richard Foundation. Mm. One, and I know it will be possible. Absolutely. Very the, possible. The second one is we want to have not just a rehabilitation center. We decided last month that looking at the population, many people, they need help. They want to get out of it. They don't know how to get out of it because of the addiction. We pr promise to have an outreach instead of enrich, outreach that people will come every maybe two or three times a week they will be counsel there will be counseling, there will be testing, blood testing to be able to, you know, test the intensity of the substance that and be able to give, let me use the word antidote mm. to cope the excesses. Because many cannot afford a rehab home. It's not easy to maintain. However, we can do something by making sure that all our local governments, all our, you know, is the council or local government has like a community home where they, they will be able to treat issues of substance abuse and addiction. And it's not just that, they should be able to make sure that every area of Lagos, every area of all the taxi states with their local government they has a way of helping and teaching homes, families, how to handle issues of drug abuse. Mm -hmm. 
this is one of the pipeline we have. And by if we are able to execute this plan, I tell you, Nigeria will be a better place. Absolutely. And I pray that all of these plans that you have in the pipeline, I pray that they come to fruition very soon. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought this was going to be our last question, but then I'm thinking about one more question. Go I'm ahead. thinking about all of the people that, there's so many people that have foundations now. There are people that you just see different foundations mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. like this one, that one. Do you think that, that we should have some sort of regulation to how people start foundations or you think that's not necessary? Because there are many people now that maybe the bad eggs in between that maybe they're guided by grief or greed or guided by things that are not, not genuine in their approach. How do you think that this can be guarded against? I think it is part of the work of the government. Mm -hmm. um, actually, they have been trying. Okay. Because most of the NGOs, they must be registered with the government. Okay. And when they are registered, there should be an inspection by the government agency mm -hmm. to actually define the objective and what they have been doing. There should be periodical visitation to assess their performance. After which, if you don't perform, there is a sanction. Hmm. If these are the, you know, and if there is a body that is controlling it, overseeing, it will be well streamlined and it will be more effective and efficient. Hmm. It's just a body overseeing it. And I not just one. You know, not just one. Not just one. Mm -hmm. The government is there, agency, mm -hmm. but there should be another superior agency mm. overlooking like an audit. Mm. Auditing this. Auditing this or um, this mm -hmm. um, activities. And they should have belong to an association. I was going to come to that. They should belong to an association that is accountable. So the, account, the association is also there to checkmate mm. and to be able to say, look, we belong to this body. You are not just an island. Mm -hmm. And if there is no correspondence between the government and the association, then there is a problem. So that overall body, like a Senate in the university or uh, governing, they will be able to say this and this. You don't just wait for one aspect. You should be able to put the two together, do the audit, you know, appraisal, and then it will cut down all the excesses or all the, you know, if there is any manipulation, it will be clear. And then you'll be able to filter the good ones and, uh, and encourage them to be more productive mm. and impactful. Mm. And thank you very much for those mm -hmm. impactful points, impact, salient, very salient um, points. If you ask me, you've spoken a lot today and we really want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you also for the amazing work that you're doing. Thank and you. we pray that it could, it will only get better. You get all the support you want. Hopefully, Parisha Richard Foundation will reach thousands, millions of lives across Amen. the world by Amen. the grace of God. Mm. Well done, ma'am. And mm -hmm. thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you very much. You. My thank name you, is Elizabeth Musa. Thank you for watching Business Day's Sustainable Philanthropy Series. We hope that you join us next time. Thank you very much.